So when you think of toolbox tours, what do you see on most of the channels these days? Automotive technicians, maybe some DIY guys along those lines, but today we're gonna switch it up a little bit. We've got Matt from Diesel Pros here in Schwartz Creek, Michigan, and we're gonna be going through the toolbox here for a professional diesel mechanic. It's gonna be a little bit different in quite a few different ways. So stay tuned and we're gonna get you guys well informed. So we're here talking with Matt from Diesel Pros. He's a professional diesel mechanic. He's been in his own business here for how long now? Uh, so we've been, been open a year and a half. So Year and a half now. And he works on everything from Fords, Duramaxes, uh, ambulances, semis. We won't hold the Fords against him, but it does happen. You gotta, have, gotta work on them. Common stuff here and there, but you work on pretty much anything and everything. Yep. So we're gonna go in depth today on his toolbox, gives you a little bit of a v different view on a toolbox tour for a diesel mechanic. And maybe you guys can compare that to exactly what I have in my toolbox or what like Captain Ron would have in a starter mechanics toolbox. So let's get into the box. So first we see that you have a nice new Matco box. Tell us about the box. Where'd you pick that up at? So this box is a Matco Revel X. Um, and it came right off the Matco truck. I ordered it in red. Um, and then I also also ordered the hutch to go with it. Um, and I've had this uh, going on about a year. It's been maybe maybe eight or ten months or so. I'm not a big fan of the Matco boxes, but I'm going to have to say this is a pretty sweet setup. With the hutch that they have, I do like the trim differences. The bumper end stops to the Matcos are really nice. The dampening drawers, their hutch that slides out and goes down. It's a really nice, you know, little addition. Their sizing is a little bit different than what you would see in Snap-on. You know, the Snap-on version of this would be like an 80, 80, 84 inch box. And this is like a 78 series. So kind of looking into the hutch here, I know he's got it lit. Now it's lit with a magnetic trip system, right? Yes, yep, and this has the magnetic trip system with the LED light in the back. LED lit on the back. Did that come from Matco? Yes, that's a full Matco. Pin. Nice. Got his welding helmets, battery testers, and some big old scan tools. What scan tools are we using? So we have a Snap-on Varus Pro. Um, we use that one quite a bit, and then we have a Matco Max. Me, um, we use that one quite a bit too, um, just for quicker stuff and things like that. Um, also, then back here we have a uh, basically this is just like a six hundred dollar um, Amazon six and nine pin code reader. Also, we'll do some OBD two stuff, but uh, we use this just for quick code checks and stuff like that and heavy heavy trucks. Now I see peeking out the new Snap On thermal imager hanging out right here, huh? Yeah, yeah. We just picked this, this your new up. toy. Yeah, we just picked this up. Um, and uh, excited to see what it can do to help us here. Um, so what did that run you? This, well, I, I got a, I got this um, and then a uh, new bore scope camera. Um, and, uh, I paid They're usually about 12, 1300 bucks. Yeah, so I paid two grand for this. I, so I gave two grand for the thermal imaging gun and then uh, the new bore scope camera that we got. Here in the top drawer, what we got going on in here, we've got the new boroscope. That's pretty new, right? Yep, yeah, we just picked that one up uh, at the same time we got the thermal imaging gun. Okay, now, the, the drawer that we want to jump to, you can tell a lot by a man, by what he's got in his junk drawer. Where's the junk drawer? Junk drawer is over here. So, look at all that all junk. Stuff. <laughs> Gaskets, what, what is this? It's a, it's a three eighths rail. Just in case you need one, yeah. Three eighths random socket rail, extra gaskets, bearings, bolts, nuts, ten millimeters, plenty of tens and thirteens. That's what we're talking about. But I don't, I don't see any super glue in here. Nope, no JB weld, no super glue. Oh, now that's our man right there. <laughs> that's our man. No JB weld, no super glue here. Sweet. <laughs> All right, let's go to the big one, the top drawer. What we got rolling in so here? The socket drawer uh, would be the top drawer. We've got all kinds of sockets. We've got 12 points of all kinds in standard and metric. 
Boy, you've got a good selection here. All the way through your half inch quad drives, one and a half inch ones here in the front. You got some of your axle nuts, axle sockets. Now out of this entire set in here, what's your most used socket set? Um, so the most used would be either this half drive here, um, or I just picked, I upgraded this set here to a snap-on, but uh, it would be those 3 8 drive 12 points, um, or any of the Allens over there, actually. The big Allens? Yeah, yeah. yeah these, are, these are all 3 8 drive snap-on. Um, oops, don't put that in there. Now, surprisingly, <laughs> you know, when do you have a lot of these things, I see all these 12 points and I start cringing, but then I realize Duramaxes are 12 points yeah there's a lot of 12 points on duramaxes uh the the fords too but uh i always use a six point socket on a, um, on a six point bolt so um, and then sitting here right in top is which is in the probably the most used spot you've got a couple of torque wrenches you get your click type is that a three eighths yeah that's a half drive half drive short click and then we've got our three eighths Tech angle, heck yeah! Now that one's probably used all the time. Yeah, yep, we use that one all the time. I love the universal torches right there. Those are very nice. Very nice drawer. I I don't even have some of these. All right, go down to the next one. So next we have the wrench drawer here. Them wrenches, everything from looks like you got good in with the Matco guy here. Yeah, got yeah. some good deals there. We got our standard, standard, standards, metrics, and the flex head 12 point ratcheting, flare nuts for or for our brake lines, our line wrenches, terminal tools. Yep. Nice. Yeah, those, those are hiding in the wrench drawer. <laughs> yep. Hey, if it fits, it ships, right? Yeah. Ratcheting stubbies, standard old school craftsmen's. What, nine, ten years old? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Long flex heads, those are almost a must anymore. Getting down into, like doing your down pipes and other things like that, those are amazing for that area. Offsets, crow's feet here in the front, looking fancy. Break out the next one. Next one would be the plier drawer here. Pliers, pliers and more pliers. PWZs, best set of wrenches or pliers on the market, alignments. They're great for that one. All the way through to the new Milwaukee's. I love those. I know you guys have seen, I got a couple of the new ones recently. They work great. All kinds of different pliers in here. We've got our snap ring ones, cutters for the hoses. These are probably the most used ones, standard pliers here in the front. I like these. These are the, the help assist double joints. Those are really great for big, heavy-duty snap rings, especially in transmissions and hub bearings. Those are killer. What's this one? And, uh, so this is Snap-On's uh, micro pliers. Uh, Ooh. Um, these come come in handy for a lot of different things. Um, very, very fine needle nose here. Um, and then they are spring-assisted. Those are nice. I don't even have those. Yeah. I like that. A set of cutters and uh, then a small little... Uh, needle nose like actual set of pliers there so sweet all right let's break out the next one okay. oh wait 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 hold on first i didn't notice that but, uh, yeah your half inch impact how old's that one oh uh, I, I, I believe i bought that at a garage sale and a box of tools so it, actually in my specific toolbox that tool is the oldest one that i own my father and my grandfather actually used it in their box so that's literally one of the oldest tools i've ever owned also Moving down here, yep. got the screwdriver and some slight miscellaneous drawer here. Now, if you guys haven't seen my last video, I ended up getting the Matco grid rail system and I don't know, it might, I like it. Compared to a lot of these molded cases here with the snap-on ones, it just saves a lot more room. I do like the full set of the Torx bit handles because instinct grips are the way to go. Some of your feeler gauges for your trans so with the 45 degree angle. Picks, picks, and more picks. How do you like the uh, Matco picks compared to the Snap-on ones? Um, so I, I prefer the Snap-on ones. I like the handle. I had the handle on. Instinct grip for the win. Yeah, but uh, those those do good. Yep. Cool. Next one. 
So the next drawer here is kind of another socket and punch set. Uh, some extra ratchets and things like that. Some scrapers, punches, extra ratchets, Matco ones. I know you were saying that you didn't use this one as much. No, I, I don't really use that one a whole lot. Um, I've only had it in my hands and used it once or twice. I prefer the snap-on one. Um, that's just my personal preference. But Because um, I'd have to say, for at least the flex-head ones, I'm a big fan of the Matco ones. I own more snap-on ones, but the Matco ones I have a big love for just because they are a thinner head design than the snap-on ones. Plus, if you do like the locking flex head, the snap-on instead has the locking mechanism here on the shaft. You bump it and it locks back into place, bad design. The Matco one actually locks, set it, forget it, and it's gonna stay where it's at. Nice set. On to the next one here. Ooh, drill bits, fancy ones. Now, do you find yourself using a lot of these drill bits and then having to, do you resharpen them or are your Matco guy cool enough to replace them? Yeah, so our, our Matco guy is pretty generous on warranty and drill bits. Um, I can show you one of the newer sets yeah. here. Um, so this is a very nice, very handy set of drill oh, bits. Oh, you got them. This I the, haven't yet. Yeah, this is the Matco stepped drill bit. And uh, these are very very handy um, from having to drill a pilot hole and things like that now I watched some demos on these things and I tell you what my impression on them is fantastic yeah. if I actually had the use for these heavier duty drill bits I would spend the money they are pricey they're like 200 and some bucks yeah. but these things eat yes they these are, this is my favorite set of drill bits I have and you can tell they've definitely been uh, been ran through the course since they came out um, I got one here that needs to go into warranty. <laughs> but other than that, um, these are these are my favorite set of drill bits to date here. Uh, these are my go-tos. I might have to break down and buy me a set. What do you guys think? Tape measure. Everybody's got to have a tape measure. Okay. Set of burrs here. Need a set of burrs. Nice. Nice. Step bits and some extra Matco screwdrivers. Alrighty, let's go down to the next one. You got some hammers, you got you so the, some more brake tools there in the back, right angle drill. Oh, and I forgot my keys inside the truck and locked it in kit. <laughs> the famous brake in kit. Mm-hmm. Now out of the hammers, which ones are you liking more? So I, I do prefer, obviously, as you can tell, the snap-on hammers. Um, the the 24 ounce ball peen is what I what I normally use. I have one of those in my roll cart, um, but I the handle and the feel of this hammer is, is hard to beat in my hand. So uh, this is my these are my go-to's. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. All right, next one. So the next drawer here. That's a heavy one. Yeah, it's a heavy. Kind of just point them out. That'll work. Sure, so we have a tap and die set. Um, this red case down here, this is a three quarter drive uh, ratchet and socket and extension set um, my dad actually bought for my grandfather. So that has some sentimental value to I me. think legit, so move this one a second. I think legitimately I, that is like the go-to set from like the 1960s. I've seen that set. We used to have one at our dealership also. It was a special tool back in the 60s for the dealership required to have it. So that is really neat to see another one of those in circulation still being used. Yep. So uh, under here we have a uh, OTC slide hammer kit. That's a full kit. Um, there's a chain here. Um, there's a pitman arm puller. Uh, two or three jaw. Puller there. Some more pullers here. Um, two, three jaw. There's Duramax LB7 um, injector cup tools, and in this box here is the injector rem remover. Specialty injector things. And being a diesel mechanic, you know, how often are you actually getting these out and using them? Um, these get used basically on a weekly basis. And funny enough, the difference between like what I would do, you know, I work on diesels here and there, but don't all the time. So for me to purchase a tool like this, it's going to be kind of an overkill thing, especially spending $100, $110 on it and then using it once every six years. But for a diesel mechanic, when you can expect to be doing these LB7s, LBZs, pulling injectors, getting these specialty tools for them, this is where the bread and butter is in helping you to get those flat rate jobs done a lot faster. 
All right, let's move on over to the smaller drawers on the left. So this top drawer here would be my electrical drawer. Electrical stuff. Now this is my jam right here. We love our electrical stuff. The automotive test kit, I really like these pinouts. Makes it nice so you're not spreading apart any kind of electrical you know, connectors. Gonna create more problems for you down the line. Got an inductive tool there. You got your butane power probe torch. Three piece test leads. You got some more picks prize. Those are, that's a terminal Ooh. cleaning kit. Terminal actually. cleaning kit. Yep, so we oh. got some, some diamond tip little picks here, plier, or uh, needle nose. Sure. Yeah, little needle nose. Um, there's a little bit of dielectric grease here. Um, nice. And yeah, some diamond tip. These work real nice for trailers and stuff like that. There's a man. Oh, that's female. really cool. I didn't, you learn something new every day. I didn't even know I need that tool. Now I said I want it. These are, are another for your round tool. pins. Yeah, round pin for those are actually diamond tipped. This is a very expensive kit, actually. Mm. Guess Ross Bell better be saving his pennies. <laughs> <laughs> Got your meter in here. Yep. Your go-to yep. test light. Is it the one with the gate? Yep, right. it's the one with the readout. Yep. Nice. Back probing kit down there. Very nice. There's a, a, that's a uh, amp clamp in that. In that Gotta have, there. trying to get that preliminary diagnostic for some draws, testing. Yep. Sweet. And the old school AM meter there in the back. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Those were my dad's, so I, he gave those to me a few years ago. Sweet. Next one. Next drawer here is another wrench drawer. All the all the toolbox manufacturers need to think about this. How many wrenches do a technician actually have? You've got what now? Three drawers worth of wrenches? Uh, yeah, three or four. Yeah, three or four wrench drawers. We need to have more full size drawers. More full size drawers for technicians. But back onto the wrenches, these are pretty sweet. Some mid-length ratcheting ones. I know you had some stubby ones in the other drawer mm -hmm. and your standard nut ones and your more crow's feet, line wrench clip crow's feet. Those are really nice for those hard to get, you know, brake lines and fuel line fittings. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Those, those are coming very handy. Moving down here. We oh, that's the junk drawer again, yeah. which we all love that junk drawer. Yeah, okay. famous junk drawer. Moving down is the power drawer. Oh, here. there's another favorite of everybody. Now, this is where the controversy is going to be. I see Milwaukee and Snap on in here. Yeah. Ooh. So, so I like both. I like a lot of different things um, about e each manufacturer. Um, so. Here, for instance, we have the half-inch drive, which I haven't got to use this a ton. I've used it a little bit. Um, half-inch fuel. Yeah, this is the nice. half-inch fuel electric ratchet. And the quarter-inch drive guys hanging out down there. Um, now, I, I, I would have to say that I'm pretty opposite on that one. With the electric ratchets myself, I really like the snap-on ones over the Milwaukee. Their head designs are smaller. They're able to get into a little bit tighter places, and they have about four to five more foot-pounds of torque. I don't know, just my personal opinion. Plus, I've got a crap load more of the 14.4 batteries to go along with it, so there's that too. But when you got the Milwaukee bit drivers and stuff, that's the jam right there. And I'm sure you got a half inch one sitting in here. Sure, yeah, there's there's a half inch drive in my roll cart. Oh, we'll get there. Out. Okay, breaking things out early. Sure. Sweet. There's a snap on drill, another Milwaukee drill, another impact driver hanging out down there. I like how you keep them chucked to what you're actually already gonna be using for ahead of time. Sure, yeah. Nice, okay. Next drawer down here has some more cases. Kits. Yeah. So we have a cooling system pressure tester adapter kit here. Um, just this is the Ford adapter. As you can see, this has been well used. This actually works on Duramax too. Mm -hmm. um, we have a torque stick kit. Um, nice. we, do, we do use these every now and again, um, but uh, I prefer to do them by hand. That way, you know. You know Good man. It takes an extra couple minutes. So. Yep. We have a master locking lug nut kit. Those are amazing to have. People always forgetting to leave their lug nut things or lock their glove boxes. Boy, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's a stud remover here. This is a gear wrench kit. Um, we use this quite often. This has been a very good kit, actually. Nice. Um, there's a power steering uh, pulley. Puller. Yeah. 
This actually came from a garage sale too. Dude, you can't knock the garage sales. You get <laughs> no. stuff at great prices. We have a snap-on thermal imaging gun. Oh, that's the, ther or the or thermometer. The, yeah, this is the snap-on uh, infrared thermometer. Yes. Here is a other snap-on tool kit. This is an injector puller for LOI, LBZ. That's what we need to see. So these are the pulling kits for the rusty-ass injectors. Yeah. Here in the rust belt, I would have to say, these injectors want to get stuck in probably, what, 75% of the time? Yeah. We, You're not getting them out? Yeah, we use this on at least 50% of the injector jobs we do. Um, and this is a very, very handy kit. Um, the only thing you got to watch out for is this will bend. Um, so you got to watch what you're doing. It's a good thing they're under warranty. That's the whole point of it. Yes. As a diesel mechanic, these are the tools, again, that you really have to think about being, you know, getting for being efficient in what you do. Nice. So there's a couple, couple different extractor kits here. Extractors and threaders. Matco and yep, Snap we've been through those. I've, I actually got those and I love them. Can't say enough about them. They're really nice kits. We use these quite often here. Got to use a strong hand. Um, this kit here is a uh, brake flare kit. Comes in very handy. We use this quite often. Nice. Now, do you find yourself doing a lot more uh, brake lines up here in bulk, or are you getting them pieced together Norm more often? Normally, so we we normally use a, a full kit. Um, and normally, oh, you know, that's if we make nice. them ourselves, then uh, we'll do we'll do all of them. But normally, yeah, we always do brake lines in, uh, as a, a complete set. That's the way to do it right there. So they're pre-coated, pre-lined. You don't have to worry about cutting, flaring. Sure. Yeah. There's a uh, snap-on cooling pressure tester. Mm-hmm. Now, do you have the refiller? Sure do. Have the mat, it's a mat coat, but yeah, mm -hmm. you have the vacuum refiller kit. Now, is that thing not the cat's pajamas? Yes, this is very nice. It makes and, uh, it so much better, especially when you're working on diesel trucks. Diesel trucks take forever to warm up and they take forever for the thermostats to open. So, when you're talking about bleeding the cooling system on it without one of these tools, you're talking about taking at least a half an hour to bleed a cooling system. This one, wham bam, thank you, ma'am, 10 minutes out the door. Sure, sweet. All right, let's actually go bust over to the right side. Over here, I have just kind of a miscellaneous little wrench drawer. More lady fingers. Those are great, especially when you're doing, you know, brake work, hubs, uh, drum brakes, getting those nasty things pulled off. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, one of, one of uh, the technicians has this one out here. He's doing a 7.3 injector job. Mm -hmm. injector Sticky job. fingers is what we call them. Yeah. There's some more fuel tools. Yeah. Right here's Look at that beast. Sawzall. God, that oh, thing's amazing. The Milwaukee Sawzall here. That's awesome. Right. I've been wanting to get a hand on one of those. Well, I've got one of the Ryobi ones. Don't make fun of me for that. I have one of those for at home, but I've been looking at getting one of the Milwaukee ones for at work. Got some fuel line tools in here. Yeah. Big boy sockets. Another torque wrench. Yeah, so there's there's two more torque wrenches here. Um, this is a gear wrench clicker, quarter drive. Uses this very just a wee baby. Yeah, uses this a lot. And then, uh, here's the other Snap-on 3/8 guy here. Um, this is the early style Tech Angle guy. Mm-hmm. Use this um, basically on a daily basis also. There you go. More impacts that half inch drives and then getting into the 36 millimeter. Some pullers, oh, nice. Your puller, this is one of the, the new OTC um, power steering pump pulley puller um, and installer. This is a very nice kit. It, it's for all in one, yeah, that's gonna do the big stuff. I've got one of the kits, but it's not one for that big at all. Sure. It's for like the smaller standard power steering pumps that have like inch, inch and a quarter openings where this one's at least got a two inch opening for it. Yeah. That's a nice looking tool. Yep, this will, so like the Duramax will fit on this side, the smaller side, and then some of the bigger Chevys and things like that will work on that side. Sweet, all right. Keep it organized, that's right. <laughs> so here's another 
wrench drawer here. No, not, these aren't wrenches. These are wrenches, like for reals right here. One and three quarter, one and seven eighths wrenches and that pipe wrench. There's a two wrench hanging out down there. That that technician beater is that is that to keep them in line yeah yeah yep. <laughs> a couple of miscellaneous files back there those are awesome god those are huge yeah. that's what she said <laughs> next next is a, another drawer with some kits of stuff in it here's a 6.0 and a 6.4 injector cup remover and installer kit Sweet. So Ford specialty tools for your diesel stuff. If you didn't know earlier on, a lot of the fuel injectors, they weren't just held down by, you know, the hold downs. They actually went into cups and, and threaded portions into the cylinder heads. And these are what are taking them out, correct? Yeah. So this, this would be to replace a cracked injector cup or something like that. Gotcha. So cool. That goes around there to keep those cool. This is the same thing other than just for a 7.3. I have this taped up because box is kind of... Mm-hmm. Cylinder honing brush right there. Yep, yeah, that's a uh, three and a three and a quarter uh, ball hone there. This is a pull or a uh, six point seven power stroke rear main installer. Um, we do a lot of six sevens and uh, see that's crazy that's seeing that's, some of those. What what did that tool cost about? This right here was about three seventy five, I believe, just for this. That's another one of those specialty tools when you're thinking about the diesel world, you know, having some of those tools where you're not going to find a tool that's, you know, like five, six inches in diameter to be able to help install a rear main. You have to have that main special tool to do that specific job. So you got to keep that in mind when going into the diesel field that a lot of these are going to be specialty things, but you're going to be using them way more often than the standard technician. Sure. This is a uh, seal installer, and I do have different adapters for this. Um, they're in a different toolbox over there, but uh, this everybody is a loves a good seal installer. Yeah. Those are nice to have, especially that big, heavy-duty version of it. Yeah, this this is for you know, medium to heavy trucks. Mm -hmm. um, What's this big thing? That oh. is. What is that beast? Actually, we got to back ratchet. up to get the good. This is a <laughs> half-inch drive air ratchet. Um, and uh, it is a monster. This will twist your wrist off. <laughs> it looks like it'll snap you off right at the elbow. <laughs> yep. That is pretty sweet. Who makes so, that one? Uh, I I don't know. This, actually, a customer gave this to me. Seco, or Cleco. That's what it is. Can't say that I knew that. Know what that one is, but made in the USA all the same. Beast tool right there. Yep. There's a uh, and then drive ratchet the there. real ratchet. Yep. Big boy stuff. All right. Well, that is pretty sweet. That looks like to be to the end of this toolbox. Then we've got the cart that we also want to go to as well. Now with the tool cart here, let's get that open. Now, as you were saying, these sliding tops, do you like that design? So I really like the sliding tops um, for putting tools or parts or you know even, even working on. The only downfall to this type of cart is it does take up a lot of real estate here. Um, so you, you have to wow. be in an open environment here to use it. Exactly, an extra foot and a half on either side of it. But I do like this nice stainless top here, you know, very heavy duty, able to work on that really easily. Snap on roll cab. It's about what a 30 inch roll cab. Yep. Yeah, I believe so. And then we've got the snap on rail system. So explain this cart. Is this like your daily items or what is this one exactly? Yep. So this is my day to day working cart. Um, I keep all my tools in this that I use on a day to day basis. Um, all everything from wrenches, sockets, ratchets, screwdrivers, my most commonly used tools. Um, so this cart can mainly get most jobs all done. Sweet. Here in the top, I would imagine your quick go-tos, everything on the single impact rail, which obviously I'm, I'm glad to see that one because myself, in my roll around cart, I'm gonna be taking my impact sockets, some of my swivels also go along with me pretty much to every job. So we've got our half three eighths, looks like quarter inch there in the front, nice quarter inch drive set here and then panning over some more quarter inch to fill the way in that one and then our pry bars right here in front as well as some of the oh there's your everyday ratchet the good old go-to snap-on flex head i think that's the 80 series yep 
FLF 80A. Good old school ratchet. Got your extensions. Now, have you had any workings with any of the Wobble Plus ones? Um, I have used them and I do really like them. I'd like to invest in a set. Um, but there is hanging out over there just one loose bubble that I do just put on the end of the extension. That's there it is. Normally, what I use. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, those Wobble Pluses, they are they're the jam. They're the way to go there. All right, let's bust out the first drawer. Oh, the nice now the nice thing about these um, these slide tops is that there's actually a couple hidden drawers in here. Whoa! Um, so you can I just keep some extra stuff in here, some uh, Persian blue for setting up rear ends and stuff like that. Um, there's a couple extra small odds and ends, some zip ties, razor blades, just some small stuff like zip that. Zip ties. Everybody needs a zip tie. Yep. If it falls off, just okay. zip tie back up if you don't have zip, duct tape. Just zip tie the zip tie. <laughs> That's right. Sweet. I like those. Just way up one on each side here. Just got some extra electrical tape, some Ford warranty stuff for an engine. Nice. Very nice. I like those a lot. Moving down here. Got some pliers going on, some of your vice grips to it, some of your clamp pliers. Those are really nice for getting some of those pain in the butt style clamps in and out. Clips, snips, wire cuts, your hose clamp pliers. Just some, some miscellaneous, some long, picks. long and small, yeah, large picks for intercooler piping. Um, some screw now, have you had the pumping. chance to use any of the flat picks? from a snap-on, the flat blade style one. They're almost like cupped on the end. Oh, no, I, I haven't used any of the flat ones yet. I did see them on the tool truck though. I'm don't, like, they're a pain in the butt and they don't work. Okay. <laughs> just, Thanks for saving me Just to save you some hassle, they're a pain in the butt and you'll never get to use them. They'll okay. sit there and maybe look pretty at best. Next, wrenches, more wrenches. Wow, I love seeing wrenches. Gear wrench, Craftsman for the standards. Now for the gear wrench ones, what kind of open ends are these? Oh, these are the those, grip stocks. Yeah, those are, yep. Nice, very nice. Matco ratchet wrenches. There's a couple out on a job. Uh-huh, and some of the stubbies there as well. Now, if you haven't been paying attention, I'm, I have kind of announced I'm gonna be doing a wrench comparison video between a couple of different brands on the open end. So stay tuned for that one, it will happen. Whoa, oh, special tool alert. What, what's this? So what what's that this is a craftsman 7h wrench here um, <laughs> and uh, so this is used for basically one purpose and that would be to get to the cage nuts on like a 6.4 or a 6.7 power stroke when you're pulling the cab um, the cage nuts inside the body spin um, so there's one way to get in there i have this exact same wrench craftsman 7 8 it is bent a little bit higher up and it's also bent at almost a 90 degree angle for the new, newer style Dodges, their rear shocks, the mounts on top of the frame, can't get to the nuts. <laughs> Same exact idea. I'm like, oh, we can see what that's for. All right. There's this little guy here too. <laughs> <laughs> that poor 10 millimeter. Yeah. Well, it's been, Sweet. Been through a couple wars. Here. There we go. There's some sweetness in here. Swivel impacts, which are probably, I would say, some of the most used tools of any mechanic in the automotive field. What about your diesel stuff? Yeah, we use we use a lot of swivel sockets and things like that. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the diesels packed in just a small area, so swivel sockets are definitely a go-to. And then all of your daily ratchets here. <laughs> Look at that baby. Oh, it's so cute. It's, it's so cute right there. <laughs> this, this here can be your friend for um, up pipe bolts on Duramaxes. Oh yeah. These, are, these come in handy here. Yeah, those are very nice. Get you a little extra torque. Mm-hmm. The big Mamma Jamma half inch ones. And there's your Milwaukee Fuel 3 8 electric ratchet. Looks like that one's a daily. Yeah, that And the good old snap on 3 8 impact. Sweet. All right. Got your snap-on grinder. Oh, I bet that thing's a beast. Yeah, that's a very handy, handy tool to have. We do some light fabrication work and a lot of welding, so that's a very handy tool to have. Adjustables, some real big, big old beater sticks here. 
Those, I can tell these are the ones that are used all day, every day. That's the way hammers are supposed to get used. Some wheel beaters, nice. And then my one of my favorite tools ever, right there, that high torque, half inch impact from Milwaukee. That thing, 1,450 foot pounds of hell yeah. That's America right there. This is actually is a snap on. What? What? Yeah, this is. This That's is a snap-on one. Yeah, this is the snap-on monster lithium. Oh. So. Have you used the Milwaukee one? I have not had a chance to do a comparison. Not yet. No. Now not. you're just gonna wait because Snap-on, their new brushless one is coming out like this month. It's gonna cost you like thirteen hundred dollars, but oh. it's supposed to be the Milwaukee beater. Okay. We're gonna try that one. It's gonna come out on the channel eventually also, but we'll have to wait to get our hands on that one. Sure. All right, go ahead. All right, so moving on. There we go. Common air tool drawer here. There we go, we got our 3 8 one. Die grinder cutting wheel straight on. Big old Ingersoll Rand. Matco. And some of these old air tools. God, who uses air tools anymore? No, I, I, I am definitely a you know proponent to be able to use some of the air tools still. They're still a lot lighter than a lot of these battery powered tools. And there's some instances in which you really just need to still use some air tools. And last but not least, we got our bottom drawer here. Wait, stuffed it in. He <laughs> stuffed it too tight this time around. Sweet. So this drawer here is kind of just a miscellaneous drawer. Another junk drawer, and this is yeah. a big junk drawer. Yeah, got a big, big snap-on pry bar down here. Nice. It's been used a few times. Forty-inch pry bar. Yeah. Sweet one. Some C clamps and a little three-jaw puller. A little one, yes. A little three-jaw puller. That is a small dose. <laughs> bad test ECM. Yep. Six liter back there. That's a, a bad six o uh, Fickum. Set of oil filter pliers here for equipment and large trucks. <laughs> now that's a filter. <laughs> Sweet, some caps. I love having those caps sit around. You never know what you might need to use those for capping off for the turbo inlets or for random nuts and bolts when you're sitting, you know, under hood on a job. Mix and paint together, you know, just everything random. They're great for that one. Sure. Yep, here's some uh, fast connectors and stuff. These come in handy for little things here and there. More testing for fuel fillings and all. Sure, yep. Some adapters and things like that. A little stash of rags. Straps, um, rags, fuel testing equipment. Yep, some hole saws. Um, Sweet. Some, some ratchet straps, some air fittings. Um, and like some 6 0 injector hold downs, just some uh, the first generation or the second generation style here. Nice. Very nice. I love seeing the junk drawers. Everybody's got their own version of it. They're always great to see. Sure. There we go, guys. That was a toolbox tour for the diesel mechanic here. All the questions that I've been getting, hopefully that's been able to answer some of those questions. We want to give a big thank you today from Matt over here at Diesel Pro. So thank you, Matt. I appreciate you showing us your uh, fancy toolbox here. It's nice to see something different other than a big old snap on toolbox, but you know, whatever. I really do enjoy going through other people's boxes like this, just being able to see the organization, how they put things together, maybe some of the extra stuff that they keep, test parts, test tools. You know, it's just nice seeing everybody's different rendition of it. Well, that's about all I've got for you guys today. I appreciate you tuning in and hanging in through these videos. I really enjoy the toolbox tours and hopefully you do as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so you get notified when I come out with cool, amazing content just like this one right here. Stay tuned. Lots of Duramax content coming out right here in Schwartz Creek, Michigan at Diesel Pros. We're going to be doing some really killer stuff with Truckmaster and Matt here at the shop they're gonna be seeing some of the fancy new stuff that we picked up at HSP Diesel this last weekend. So make sure you stay tuned with that one and over at Truckmaster's channel as well. I appreciate it, thanks again, and as always, you guys stay awesome.